Greetings and salutations, Michigan Ultimate Survivor League members. Uh, it is week five coming up uh, tonight. We get kicked off. I don't know what the game is tonight, but still <clears throat> a little late on the podcast. Been really busy. Not feeling all that great, to be honest with you. Don't think I got the vid, thank God. But, yeah, you know, a little under the weather, I think. Um, so not quite the intensity level you're used to, but uh, we're going to get this done together. So uh, let's get it going. Here we are <clears throat> in our nice standings page. We're going to start off with, like we always do, um, once we get past uh, the first couple weeks, our bottom 10 as well as our top 10 or top 20. Um, so we're looking down here. So far right now, unfortunately, Chubb Ertz is the weakest link, if you would. Uh, they <clears throat> have not won a game, and they've amassed through four weeks 271.89 points. Not too far ahead of them, we have Team Willie Ledford, 0-4, 275. Uh, Whispering Eyes, 0-4, 276. And finally, Savage FC, Patrick McNamara, a.k.a. The Hoax himself, is still unwin, unwind, uh, winless, I guess. And, uh, yeah, 0-4, 300 points, though. Now, <clears throat> 300 points actually isn't too bad, because if you look up above him, we've got people like Hammer, 24-7, FL Farging Ice Holes, which is no longer known as that because of new ownership. Okay, Kambas, Muckfish again, Your Mother Likes My Defense, Stick Zit in ya, Monstars, we're going past the bottom 10, J Footman Can, Giggle Giggle, Freedom Fighter, rough, rough week for you, and Can I Get a Hot Chub, as well as Brady's Balls, I guess, technically. <clears throat> All of these teams, while they may be 1-3, and three, they haven't scored as many points as Mr. McNamara here, so uh, he's not that bad. There are two things that go into these ratings. Number one is your record. Number two is your points. And in case you are new to the league, let me tell you how important points are. At the end of the year, people, two teams, two teams, will make, or maybe even three, I'll have to double check, at least two, will make the playoffs regardless of record, but only on points. So you could technically be 0-11 and, and still make the playoffs if you just are the most unlucky person in the world and have more points than anyone else. I don't know how you'd be 0-11, but theoretically, I guess it could be possible. Or even if you're 1-10, you know. So then we're going to scroll up here. We've got a lot of 2-2 two two teams, you know. Uh, let's look at some of these teams who are no longer in the top 20, if we could. Um, we have Most Known Unknown, <coughs> who has fallen... From number 18 all the way down to number 22 with their loss last week. Uh, so they're 2-2, two and, two and they only have 28 more points in McNamara. So <clears throat> Team Lil Weinberg is on a two-game skid. Oh, man, someone get that man on the motorcycle again. And let's see what's going on here. He's two games in a row. He went from higher than that. Then we got, oh, our old Dem friends, AOC, Ilhan Namar, and a bunch of other bums. 2-2. Uh, two and two. Uh, they lost last week as well, so they fell from number 17 to number 27. Hey, look at that. Providence Power. There I am. I didn't lose this week, but still not down in the top 20. <clears throat> Brady's backup fell from 14 to number 25 with two straight losses now. So that's tough, but they've scored 391.4, so that's pretty darn good. We're going to get up here. Hockenstein loses, and now he's 2-2. Two and two. <clears throat> Almost 400 points, so good lord, that's good to be 2-2. Two and two. I don't know how the hell that's even possible. Hockenstein, you're going to be fine. Trust me when I say that. And then, uh, yeah. Here's the 3-1 and one teams as we get to the top 20. Sag Nasty's notch above top notches and Zeke's relationship corner are both 3-1 and, and out of the top 20, so there's a lot of good teams out there. But look at this, though. Again. Points. Points, 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 right? Sag Nasty's notch above top notch. They're 3 and one, and they've scored six more points than the 0 and four Savage FCs. You know, I mean that's nuts. That's why I always say I've, I'll say it till the day I leave this earth. This league is great <clears throat> because it's it, it's kind of like the NCAA tournament. It helps to know things, but a lot of luck involved. And as you can see in McNamara's case here, a lot of bad luck, and in Krusty Rusty's case, a lot of good luck. As he's only scored six more points, <clears throat> but he has a better record to the tune of 3-1 and one versus 0-4. Oh so we're going to get to the top 20 now. 
first and foremost, we have Nab Tab Knights with 310.43. Barely ahead of them is the Black Hole, Rob Bradley's team. <clears throat> 310.59. The Clockwork Elves won again. And the DMT trip got him back in the win column. It's 318.14 for Lennon, Seagrave's team. Nasty Nutri fell hard this week, losing, <clears throat> going from number 8 to number 17. And she's a big drop, big drop. 333, 99% <clears throat> lo lost. Yes, it's true. 99% luck, 1% heart. Loses this week. Goes from number 9 to number 16. Collector Kings falls from number 5 to number 15 with 348 points at the loss. <clears throat> the Mac Attack is back, Jack. Say it ain't so. Break up the Seagraves family. They've got mother and son <clears throat> both in the top 20. And trust me, they do not collude. There's no collusion, people. Got to get my friend Donald back out here to tell you there's no collusion. It's kind of proven, by the way, yesterday or whatever, two days ago, maybe. I don't know what day it is anymore. 348.69 points, and she's on a two-game win streak. Tenacious D is also on a two-game win streak. That's uh, Mr. Crampton. Hopefully, I'll see you on Saturday uh, with barely a little bit more. Uh, 349.89. So, number 13. Number 12, Cheatski falls all the way from number 3. Lands pretty hard, but not too bad. Down to number 12, 352. DeWyans on a two-game win streak. Must be nice if the actual Lions were on a two-game win streak. 353 and 3-1. And <clears throat> now we're in the top 10. The Apache Chiefs. Home, home, home on the range. 360.6. He's 3-1. and one. <clears throat> Riding a three-game win streak after starting off 0-1. When he started, hey, man, he just moved into that nice house. Had a lot going on. Couldn't focus on the lineup. And now that he's settled in, the Apache Chiefs find themselves settling into the top 10. Not just the top 20, but the top 10 with 360 points. <clears throat> number 9, <clears throat> up from number 19, is Toon Squad. Uh, three and one, a three-game win streak as well. Honolulu Blue Balls, another Weinberg sighting here. I think there's two Honolulu Blue teams. I don't know what the hell's what. I think this is Weinberg, three eighty-three point three eight or three eight three point three five points. One last week from number sixteen up to number eight. <clears throat> Liberalism has eroded the foundations of yada yada yada. Also a three-game win streak, three hundred ninety-three points. He's way up there. And then our, our friend Malin Incorporated, the f number one team curse, lost this week. Went from 3-0, and number one, down to number six. Not too bad of a fall in the polls, though. Uh, 410 points this guy has, so yeah, he's doing good. Taco Tuesday, a four-game winner. Now we're in the top five. These are also the undefeated teams. <clears throat> he's the worst of the undefeated teams, but that's like being like the ugliest supermodel. Uh, that working for Victoria's Secret, yeah. Uh, 321 points, and he's 4-0. How the hell is that possible? Luck, that's how. Good job, Taco Tuesday. Just a sniff ahead, our old friend Joe Biden's team. He's up here, 4-0, 350 points, number four up for number seven. Fly, Eagles, fly. Oh, my God, I never thought I'd see the day. He's top three, 4-0, 353.26. They are indeed flying high, folks. Happy Gala Days. <clears throat> He's 4-0 as well. Number two, 358 points. I'm sorry. I don't feel great. It sucks, and i got to go to work today. I'll infect all kinds of people. Yeah, watch out. Uh, 358.89. I'll be wearing my mask, so I'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then the number one team in the nation is... 4-0. A four-game win streak. Wouldn't you know it? And he hasn't lost yet this year. The number one team in the nation is Steel City Sackers, who even got on the Facebook group and made a post saying, "Oh, I'm the greatest person in history." Dustin Hansen, with a you know th with a fair 378 points, uh, pretty damn good. Uh, four and oh, look at this though. You see this guy? This column right here, by the way, in case you're wondering, is how many points against the teams have. This guy has 262 points. Happy holidays. I mean, that's not a lot of points. So the fact you're 4-0 is not surprising. Let's go down to McNamara. How many points against he has, just for science? Three forty-two point seven eight. Yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. Oh man, who's got the most points against him? You ask. I think I saw a three seventy something. No, I did not. 
The most points against them, I think, is 370.12. I did say that. Play with Mike Ditka. <clears throat> but he still managed to be 2-2, two and two, even though he's only scored 325. So that means people put up some big points against him. So, very important to note at this point, okay, we are past the point of no return. Effective now. Today. Thursday night. Week 5 officially gets started. So barring some kind of nuclear disaster, the season, if it is canceled any time between tonight at 8 p.m. and the rest of the year, whoever the top-ranked people in the league will split the total prize pool, which I don't even know how much it is, but it's it's way up there. Um... So, assuming uh, they do kick off tonight's game, which I'm sure they will, because if they if they don't kick off tonight's game, week five technically hasn't started, but still, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be, oh my god, something just fell upstairs. <laughs> you might have heard that, maybe you didn't. <clears throat> anyway, so for all intents and purposes, if the league season were to end this week, which it's not going to, by the way, but if it did. The five undefeated teams of Steel City Sackers, Happy Galladays, Fly Eagles Fly, Justice Sniff Head, and Taco Tuesday are all 4-0. Doesn't matter on points. We said it again at the beginning. It doesn't matter on points because of that. Points points is very important, but not this early. So these five teams would split all of the money. All the 3-1 teams, sorry, you're out of luck. And anyone who's less than that, definitely out of luck. So that's how that goes. So... Looking <clears throat> at the standings, see where we're sitting here, okay? Uh, Jeff Lebowski Conference, we have five three and one teams, okay? So six, nine, 11, and 15, as well as Zeke's Relationship Corner, who's unranked, um, Tom Farmer's team there. Uh, all five of you are three and one, fighting for first place there. Um, we have uh, Malin Incorporated with 410 points. Uh, but three and one, man. Unfortunate for that. Going down to Kirk Lazarus, we have Happy Galladays by themselves. Uh, as Christopher Russell, new to the league, showing that he is knows what he's doing so far, at least through four weeks, four and zero. Oh. Then you've got a three-way tie between Honolulu Blue Balls, the Clockwork Elves, and Nantab Knights at three and one. And you know that's, I mean. There's a lot of one and three and two and two teams in this in this conference there. So, Ron Burgundy Conference, we have Sag Nasty's top notch above top notches, ranked over Chichki the Mac Attack and Nasty Nutria, even though he's not officially ranked because that's because who he has beaten. He has beaten Chichki. I know that for a fact. We talked about that last night. He only has 306 points. But if the, <clears throat> the league were to end today, well, he wouldn't get anything because the league would be over. But uh, he would win that conference, at least. So he gets a small trophy in his trophy room on this site. The Jeff Spicoli Conference. This is gonna be tight, folks. Steel City Sackers, 4-0. The Apache Chiefs, 3-1. And, and then that's it. Everyone else is 2-2 two two or or worse. So all these guys are fighting, including myself, <coughs> for to get up in there in that contention spot. So that's, that's gonna be a close conference all year. Just the Sniffheads 4 0. Then we got two 3 and 1 teams, Liberalism and the Black Hole. In the Frank Drebin Conference. Then we get down to the Brody Bruce Conference. We got two 4 0 teams here. This is wild. Fly Eagles Fly and Taco Tuesday. Wonder when they're going to meet. Then we've got Tenacious D and 99% Luck, 1% Heart at 3 and 1. And then a slew of 2 and 2s, 1 and 3s, and 0 and 4s. So, <clears throat> we are essentially a quarter way through the regular season. <laughs> Uh, about a third of the way through the muscle season, regular season. So let's take a look at our top performers so far. Um, we're going to look and see who, through four weeks, has been started the most. Why you cannot sort this by number of games, I'll never know. But it looks like, so far, whoa, 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 spoiler alert, come on. Quarterbacks, let's look. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has been started by 36 teams, so that's half the league, literally. 
By the way, as my friend Donald had said at the last podcast, there are not 74 teams in this league. He was wrong. He was wrong. 72 teams. I tried texting him in while he was talking. I'm like, yo, you're wrong again. And it uh, didn't matter. Uh, how's that coronavirus recovery coming? Wish you the best, sir. Um, 36, and then 34 people start Josh Allen, who is one of my new favorite players, by the way. That team's just fun to watch. Kyler Murray, 32 teams have started him. And then there's a big drop. Well, not a big drop. Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, and then there's a whole bunch of scrubs down here. I like seeing who started, like, Daniel Jones. Who the fuck has started Daniel Jones? I would love to know who you are. Who is brave enough to admit it? Put it in the message group or in the Facebook group. Who the hell started Daniel Jones? Seriously. Kirk Cousins, there's another bold choice. Tyrod Taylor, yeah, well, okay, I get that one at least. I mean, I would never start him unless, you know, someone put a gun to my head, but still, Gardner Mishu, he got randomized this week, and yeah, more on that here in a minute. Running backs, who we got at the top? We've got Austin Eckler at 34, Alvin Kamara at 32, and Aaron Jones at 30, and then we got Kenyon Drake, where you don't want to be is have a high number here, but be down here at the bottom of the page. That means your average is very low. 3.597 points. i got to take a huge dump, and I'm pretty sure it's going to score me more points than 3.597. In fact, I can feel it coming on right now. Kenyon Drake, I'll call that one. <clears throat> wide receivers. Number one started wide receiver so far is Stefan Diggs. Uh, part of that Buffalo squad that's exciting to watch. Devontae Adams with 33 starts, and then Tyler Lockett with 32. Lowest started. we got to go to the second page. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Dontrell Inman. Of course, these could be randomizers, too, by the way, but still. Greg Ward. Let me just tell you, can we just talk about how bad, how bad the Philadelphia Eagles receiving core is? I mean, oh my god. There's nobody on that team. Nobody has anyone ever heard of. Like, I think their top receiver at this point was a six-round draft pick out of Old Dominion. And people blame Carson Wentz for being a bum. It's like, get him some players, for God's sakes. He's awful. That team is just sh horrible. I don't blame him at all. Like, who the hell's running that operation? Bob Quinn? Uh, 27 starts for Mark Andrews. He fucked me when I started him. He needed to catch three passes. He got two. Thanks for being useless. 27 other or 26 other owners have been victimized by him, although his average is 13.078. Not when I started him, I can tell you that much. TJ Hawkinson, people think he's good for some reason. 25 people started him. 25 people started Zach Ertz. George Kittle scored 16-point average. He's only started about eight players so far. And Jared Cook... 21 people started him. Let's skip the kickers because nobody gives a rat's ass. And let's go to the defenses, a.k.a. the teams that have played the Jets. The Colts have been started by more than half the league. 39 players or owners have started them. 28 have started Baltimore. 28 have started the 49ers. I believe I've started both of those teams, actually. <clears throat> they played the Jets. At least the 49ers have. That's when they lost all their players. And then, yeah. One team has started the Cowboys. Which, I mean, is not great. And so let me just tell you about... Uh, what the hell? I don't even know what this guy's name is. Where is he at? I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta go on a small tangent here. So my dad's squad, uh, he's, he is old. And uh, he was boycotted in the NFL like a lot of other people. And now all of a sudden he's watching it. Go figure. Although, I don't know about the Garrities. They actually sat out this year because they were so so serious on their boycott. But anyway, he's also boycotting being able to hit the submit lineup button, apparently, because he submitted a lineup, and he never got put in because he didn't click the submit lineup button. So, I am a fair ruler. <clears throat> I don't care if you're my dad or not. If you don't have a damn lineup in, you're getting, your ass is getting randomized. So, he got randomized, and he was down <laughs> going into Monday night by a significant significant portion okay and the only player he had going was a guy that i honestly have never heard of named robert tanyan okay robert tanyan for the green bay packers okay this handsome devil right here okay 
And <laughs> yeah, um, he was down by like twenty four points. I think he was down by, and he had Robert Never Will Be Tanyan in. And look at this right here. The man had the game of his life, as you can see. Let me mash you a question, and Squadrils both started him. And he scored 25.9 points, 6 receptions, 98 yards, 3 goddamn touchdowns. And he put Freedom Fighter in his place, putting Squadrils with their first win of the year. Comes via randomizer, by the way. Uh, so congratulations to the Squadrils, as well as not let me mash you a question. Hopefully he helped you win this week, too. Uh, actually, let's see. Where are you at, Robert Tanyan? Did you win? It doesn't let me click on him. Whatever, but hey. Hats off to you for the hat trick. So we're looking ahead to this week. Uh, i got a child who thinks coming down the stairs soon. <clears throat> week 5 head-to-head -head matchups. Here we go. Uh, we've got the Bean Team at 1-3 and three, taking on Super Original 1-3. and three. At this point, nobody cares. Toon Squad number nine taking on Zeke's Relationship Corner. They are three and one. They're not ranked, but that's a big game, folks, right there. That's a huge game. Both three and one. <clears throat> Malin Incorporated, Paul Ward, formerly number one team, taking on the one and three Granny Baloney Curtains. We call them GBC for short. Now you see me, now you don't. Ryan Fraser Squad, two and two, still just sitting around there, taking on Chris Amos's one and three Muck Fish again. We've got a couple good owners there. We'll see who wins that one. And then we've got a matchup of two top 20 teams as number 11, DeWyans, take on the number 15 ranked Collector Kings. And what is so far the game of the week? We'll see if there's better games coming up. <clears throat> Double season Brady Balls, Squadrals versus Honolulu Blue Balls, Happy Galladays versus the aforementioned Freedom Fighter, who is somehow actually favored to win? That doesn't make any sense. Nobody cares. Who knows about these numbers? These numbers mean jack. Who we got coming down the stairs? Oh, hello. How are ya? Good morning. Oh, where was I? <clears throat> Concussion protocol taking on most known unknown. That's a couple of two and twoers. No, it's a one and three versus two and twoer. AOC is two and two taking on Savage FC. Oh my god, it's the battle of the hoaxers. Uh, Patrick McNamara taking on Pat Provost. And then we get another top 20 matchup as 18 versus 20. The Clockwork Elves take on Nad Tab Knights. Uh, that'll be a very good game. Watch that one, both 3 and 1, obviously. Brady's back up to you. can go. You're fine. Yeah, Mom? Oh, she's still sleeping. I'm just surprised you saw her. Oh, well, maybe she died and you saw her ghost, but I don't think so. Um, hope not. I'd be up the creek. Brady's back up taking on the Donkey Punchers. I believe they are 2-2 two and 2-2, two and two and two, yep. Young Cromwell, who lost the Clockwork Elves this week. Can I get a hot chub taking on number 12, Chichki? We going down, we going down, we going down. The <clears throat> John G's Gems, a temporary name put in by yours truly, taking on Honolulu Blues. And a, uh, oh, snap. We got just a sniff ahead, number 4, taking on the Black Hole. Which is Rob Bradley. We got a three and one taking on a four and zero. Oh. Huge division uh, conference uh, implications there. It is cold. Somehow the windows were open and the heat was off. It's fifty eight degrees when I walked down here today. I don't know who's in charge of shutting windows around this part, but. And then we've got another big game. Well, here's the game of the week right here, folks. It's I mean this is it. I asked when they're playing. They're playing this week, Paige. You hear me? In f what do you mean in what? In Ultimate Survivor League. It's the ultimate. What do you think? Who's going to win? We've got the number three ranked Fly Eagles Fly 4-0. Mick Debo taking on Scott Miller's Taco Tuesday. Number five. Who's going to win? Number five. Number five. Taco Tuesday. You don't even like tacos. Why would you choose it? Do you like Eagles? She likes Eagles, but she's picking Taco Tuesday in the upset. Not much of an upset. Three versus three versus five. <clears throat> and then we've got New Orleans Rock Chucks, Aaron King's team taking on Tenacious D, uh, Josh Crampton. There's a couple good owners there. Team Lil Weinberg, can he get off the skids? He's losing two games in a row, taking on Robert Ames. Old Bobby. He can dunk. He probably can't anymore. Can you dunk anymore, Bobby Ames? I want to know. 
So <clears throat> those are game game of the week. Definitely number three versus five. Pretty rare that we get uh, two teams in the top five playing each other. But uh, so yeah, that'll be a big one. Be huge. Be huge. I would just like to say that uh, the Eagles are an American tradition unlike any other that you see. And uh, we're going to hope that the Eagles do fly, in fact. I'm doing fine. Just came back from Walter Reed Medical Center and uh, wanted to come in and wish the Fly Eagles Fly the best of luck because the Eagles are American and we do love them. And we love kitties. Hello, kitty. You can't, oh, hello, kitty. Hello. I, I, love, I, love, I love cats, you know. Uh, my my ten year old daughter's here, else I'd probably say something else, you know. But I do love cats, so uh, I wish you all a good time. I think James did a great job on this podcast, and um, I just I hope I hope you can all win because I don't like talking about losers, but there are losers here, most notably my man Patrick McNamara. I hope you win. A bunch of good people in that game, so one of you gonna lose. So we'll talk to you later. Y'all have a wonderful night. God bless America and God bless Donald Trump.